Today I'm going to show you how to make sourdough pizza. Mmm, pizza. <laughs> Hi, I'm Suna and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to show you how to make the dough for sourdough pizza. How to ferment it, how to shape it and how to bake it. And I'll show you my four favorite toppings for pizza. Pizza probably originates from the flatbreads like the Roman for Panis Forcaccius. You can learn how to make my version of that, also known as Forcaccia, if you follow the link in the card above. The modern pizza was invented in the early 19th century in or around Naples in Italy. The earlier versions of this flatbread did not have tomatoes, as tomatoes were thought to be poisonous because they are of the nightshade family. But by the early 19th century, the poor people in Naples had started eating tomatoes with their yeasted flatbreads, and thus the modern pizza was born. The popularity of the pizza quickly spread to rest of the rest of Italy over the next years. After the Second World War, U.S. servicemen were stationed in Italy, and they really liked pizza. And the popularity of the dish grew as they came back to the States again. Today, pizza is among one of the most popular fast foods and statistics show that on any given day, 13% of all Americans eat pizza. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. My goal is to show you how to get the most out of every ingredient and I want to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The dough that I'm making today is made with Tipo Zero Zero flour, which is an Italian finely ground and sifted flour with a high protein content. If you cannot get Tipo Zero Zero flour in your local store, you can substitute with bread flour. If you cannot get bread flour, I'd recommend that you spike whatever flour you can get with Vital wheat gluten and uh, to get to at least 12% protein. My child, wheat gluten is a flour where the protein of regular flour has been extracted, which means that it's super high in gluten, somewhere between 70 to 80 percent usually. If you're unsure how much Vital wheat gluten to add to your flour, I've made a calculator which calculates the exact amount for you. Follow the link in the card above. Also, about 5 percent of the flour is semolina flour, just to give it a bit more texture. Semolina flour is a whole grain flour made from durum wheat. You will also need semolina flour for dusting your peel before putting the pizza in the oven. The hydration of the dough is 65%. We don't want it to be too difficult to shape the dough, and unless you're an experiment, experienced pizza baker, I don't recommend changing the hydration until you've baked a bunch of pizzas. The salt content is pretty high at 2.4%, but this makes uh, the base stand out more and have a place in the taste profile. The inoculation is 20%, which is perfect for fermentation at 21 degrees Celsius, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If your room is vastly warmer, you should lower the inoculation so it doesn't ferment too fast. If you tried my bread calculator before, I've added a new function that changes the inoculation easily. Just press the button called inoculation and type the new inoculation percentage and click OK. It will change the amount of starter or pre-ferment, uh, keeping the hydration and the total weight the same. Follow the link above for the pizza dough formula preloaded in the bread calculator. If you'd like to support the channel, please buy some merch or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Those are affiliate links. So if you buy something, I'll be getting a percentage of that. Those were the words. This is the recipe. The written recipe, the ingredients and the amounts are linked in the card above. First add 585 grams of Tipo Zero Zero flour. Then add 65 grams of semolina flour. 13 grams of diastatic malt powder. Optionally, you can skip this one. And then 16 grams of salt. Mix with your fingers until it's all combined. Then add 130 grams of mature sourdough starter, 18 grams of extra virgin olive oil, 
and 400 grams of water. Mix with your fingers and hands until the flour has been completely hydrated. Let the dough rest covered for 30 minutes. Then the bulk fermentation is starting and we'll do three sets of stretch and folds spaced out by 30 minutes. The first set of stretch and folds. The second set of stretch and folds. and the third set of stretch and folds. At this point, we'll do a window pane test to see if the gluten is developed. You should be able to stretch the dough very thinly without tearing it if it doesn't add a set of stretch and folds more after 30 minutes. Mine was fine, so I added to a bulking container and put it in my proofer, set to 30 degrees Celsius, about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I wait until the dough has doubled. In my case, it took around three hours, but if it takes longer, that's fine. Go for the doubling. Then it's time for dividing the dough and pre-shaping it. I measure out balls of dough of 300 grams each, which will give you a nice 25 centimeter or 10 inch pizza, which fits a dinner plate nicely. I pre-shape all the pieces into little balls. It's exactly like shaping a bowl. I oil a pan that will hold the dough balls during the final rise. And then I add the dough balls to the pan. I cover the pan with cling film and put them in the fridge for final proof. I left mine for two days, but you can go anywhere from 24 hours to five days if you want. You can also final proof about one hour at room temperature. Be aware that the dough is much easier to shape when it's cold though. Then it's time to make the pizza sauce. Put a pot over medium heat, add a good splash of olive oil to the pot and let it heat up. Add a medium diced onion. Crush two cloves of garlic into the oil. Let it cook until the onions are mellowed and translucent. Then add 400 grams, a 14 ounce can of tomatoes. I'm using these San Marzano tomatoes that actually grew on the side of Mount Vesuvius, but <laughs> you can use any old canned tomatoes. Then add 140 grams, about five ounces of tomato paste, two teaspoons of dried oregano, one teaspoon of dried basil. Chop everything up and mix it around. Let it simmer under a lid for at least 30 minutes. Then season to taste with salt and pepper. At this point, you can blitz it up in a food processor for a more smooth result. Add it to a container and store it in the fridge until you need it. 
Then when it's time to make the pizza, add your baking steel or baking stone to the top shelf of your oven. Heat it as high as it goes and add the broiler if you can. Let it heat for at least half an hour, but an hour is better. You want the steel to be completely saturated with heat. Now it's time to make the pizza. Flour your counter liberally. Grab a ball of dough from the fridge and press it flat. Squeeze it down in the middle, pressing it out into a disc while turning it. The size should be about 12 centimeters or four and three quarters inches. Then gently tug on the dough and then turn it a bit. Keep pulling on the dough until your pizza base is about 20 centimeters or seven and seven eighths inches. and lift the dough up until your knuckles and work the disc around while tucking for each move of your hands. Keep going until the base is around 25 centimeters or 10 inches. Then flour your peel with semolina and add the pizza base to the peel. If you accidentally tear the dough, like I did here, totally on purpose, right? Uh, you can just cover up the hole like this. It'll be fine. Then to make a margarita, you add tomato sauce. A little goes a long way. Swirl it around until you reach about one centimeter, about a half an inch from the edge. Then add fresh buffalo mozzarella. and a good swish of olive oil. Then put it in the oven. If it's cooking unevenly, you can just uh, turn the pizza around midway. The amount of minutes needed, you'll have to figure out yourself because it's very oven dependent. I finish it off with a touch of Parmigiano Reggiano, which is a quote, the correct Parmesan, and then some fresh basil. Have a look at this guy. Then I'm going to make a quattro stagioni, which means four seasons in Italian and it's divided into four quadrants, each representing a season. First add tomato sauce. And then fresh buffalo mozzarella, torn up. For the first quarter, I'm using artichoke to represent spring. The next quarter I'm skipping because that will contain fresh basil to represent summer. The next quarter contains mushrooms which represents fall or autumn. The last quarter will get prosciutto and black olives to represent winter. Off to the oven it goes. After it comes out, I add some Parmesan cheese and the fresh basil leaves.
The next one I'm making is my personal favorite. First add the tomato sauce. And then some shredded mozzarella. Mushrooms. Prosciutto. And to take it over the top, pineapple. The last one I'm making today is an olive and capers pizza. It's super simple, yet super tasty. First, tomato sauce. Then shredded mozzarella cheese. Then some delicious olives. And some rinsed capers. This also gets a grating of Parmesan cheese. That's my kind of pizza. If you need some inspiration for what to add to your pizza, I've added a huge list of classic and some not so classic pizzas in the written recipe that I linked earlier. It's also linked in the description. Now go make some sourdough pizza. Both your belly and your family will thank you. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Cool.